Welcome to the Space 1975 podcast. I'm uh, Robert Jodonik, the originator of the Space 1975 Kickstarter uh, project. And if you don't know about this project, it's brand new. It's running through September 1st. And uh, the goal is to get enough backing to publish a new anthology of space opera fiction with a 1970s so uh, to uh, try to tell you a little bit more about that project, I thought I'd bring in one of our authors today. His name is Craig Martell. Many of you are no doubt familiar with this man. Hi, Craig. Indeed. Hey, how are you doing, Robert? It's great to be on board. Yeah, it's great to have you. I'm so glad that, uh, that you agreed to uh, participate because you've written quite a bit of science fiction in your career. Uh, for example... Just a little bit. Uh yeah, but the uh, and I I love anthologies. I love uh, the premise of the 1975 uh, cover is great, and people <clears throat> people always talk about the covers. That's the first look you get, and your cover says everything. It is is very spot on for what you're trying to accomplish, and also I love 70s sci-fi. I mean, I love 50s and 60s sci-fi, but 70s is a, is a big win too. Yeah, there was there was some great there was some great stuff that came out of that time. Um, what 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 uh, books or uh, TV shows or movies uh, from that era were in particularly influential for you? I, I have to say that uh, I'm a child of the 60s, so I watched uh, Star Trek, the original series, when each new episode came out. I mean, I was a little fella, but my brother was a teenager, and uh, he got the TV for that hour each week, and uh, we watched it, and I watched it, and I grew up with that and that influence. And then going into the 70s, you had the Star Trek movies, you had the original Battlestar Galactica, you had Star Wars, you had a lot of cheesy moves, Ardos. I mean, there's some really uh, a great stuff that came out in the 70s. And that's also when I hit my prime in reading. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, you know, my that was my formative years, 10 to 18 years old was the 70s. So uh, um, I, I read... My brother's library, he had a fantastic science fiction library. I read uh, all of the Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, fantasy. But then you had the science fiction that he had as well. And that was uh, all the old Daw classics uh, that uh, there, the, the, some of the uh, uh, flip books where you read one on one side and you flip it the other way. Yeah. And uh, so, so much great stuff. So, uh, I, I mean, from Lynn Carter to uh, uh, Roger Zelazny to... Uh, uh, I, I mean, there's so many names. Uh, Anne McCaffrey, she started her Dragon Riders of Pern series in the 60s, but it hit its stride in the 70s with her publishing one to two books a year. So by the time I was reading, it's, there was always new material and it was a big beefy thing that you could check out from the library. And it, it was, it, that was great. And, and now I've had the pleasure of meeting Todd McCaffrey. And he, one thing he said that, uh, that surprised me, and I, I realized, yes, this is truth, is he said, my mother always said she only wrote science fiction because you think dragon riders, that's fantasy, not fantasy at all. It's yeah. science fiction. So it was, a, it was great to hear that and, and think about it and look back at the 70s and see all of the influence of that era with, with the authors who were there and with uh, the movie stars and the combining of uh, print media with now more realistic when Star Wars came in, that was better, better uh, special effects than you could ever imagine in your, in your own mind because yeah. you've just never seen anything like that. So it was really a great time to, uh, to expand your boundaries. I don't know if younger people can fully appreciate how amazing that experience was seeing Star Wars. <laughs> uh, well, now it's Star Wars Episode Four, A New Hope for the first time. I mean, it was so above and beyond anything else that had been done. I mean, 2001 took it pretty far, that, and that was uh, Rumble, right? Worked on that, and some of the same guys. It was involved. neat. Yeah. But, uh, boy, Star Wars, it just blew everything else out of, the, out of the water, and it set the tone. It set the standard for that new, new era of special effects. So I remember I mean, uh, we, wow. we watched it in the theater. It, was, <laughs> it got very little press. I was, uh, uh, from, I'm from Dubuque, Iowa. So here in Iowa, middle of nowhere, it's a Thursday night. Yeah. And nobody is at the theater. It's, it's opening night for Star Wars. And there's probably 10 people in the theater. And so me and a friend, uh, we were in uh, 
geez, I don't even know, eighth grade, tenth grade at the time. And uh, we went, and that opening sequence, that opening sequence blew anything else out of the water that uh, you could imagine because it was big screen, the laser beams flashed, it just <laughs> blew your mind. I mean, it was it was incredible a uh, uh, way to introduce science. At that point in time, I'm like, I know. And it, even <laughs> though at that time, I had already written a book. I had already written a post-apocalyptic novel. Oh, I didn't <laughs> know you had been writing from that young of an age. <laughs> I, I I wrote that one. I wrote my first book when I was twelve. I wrote a full book. Now it ha it, it has gotten lost, so I don't right. have that manuscript anywhere. But I did write it, and I I hand wrote it on all these different notebooks. I jammed it. I counted my words because I was shooting for forty thousand words. That was my yeah. hey to have a novel. I'm gonna write a novel, and uh, so I'm like, oh yeah, I have to have this many words, and and. Uh, it was neat. So I'd already written a, a, a book. I already liked science fiction, but that made, yeah. that solidified it. Wow. So did you, you hit the 40 K you hit the 40 K goal for that book. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty impressive. Nice, nice work. And writing in a variety of notebooks, some little ones, some big ones. It was, yeah. a, it was a mishmash. That, that kind of set the tone for your career, right? I mean, you, of course, um, had a lot of other things that you did in your life. You, you went a lot of other places. You, you, you are a Marine and, and you spent a lot of time there as well, but then you came back to it and, and now you're just, you are really a productive author. But it's, I wrote that on summer vacation. So I wrote it over the course of like three weeks or a month. I wrote, I hand wrote 40,000 words. And it, so I knew I could do it. And actually the, I, through my whole life, if I set my mind to something, I, I, I was going to get there. <clears throat> and uh, I just, I focus on one thing at a time. And yeah, that's easy to say. 20 books to 50K, <laughs> conferences, writing book. Now it's all related to, uh, to writing books. So yeah. <clears throat> when I was in the Marine Corps, I never wrote any books. I, I focused mm -hmm. on my Marine Corps career. After I, I retired, I went to law school. Then I focused on that career. And then when I got tired of that career, okay, I retired. And then uh, I started writing full time and have, I'm focusing on this. Well, thanks for mentioning 20 books to 50K. That's something that I, that I really wanted to talk about with you. You're a key figure in that organization. Is, is it safe to say you're one of the leaders of that, of that group, that indie publishing focused group? I, I, would, I say. would say yes, I, I, I run the group. So it's, I have a great group and it's not, it's, it's me and who I'm surrounded by because yeah. nobody is ever an island or a rock. Uh, no matter how much uh, uh, Simon Garfunkel sing, sing to that effect, <laughs> it's you, you. It's who you're surrounded by that make mm -hmm. you what you are. And I have such a great uh, supporting cast, such a great team that uh, we get done what we need to get done. We keep the group over forty two thousand authors focused on the business of being an author. Yeah, well, I've I've been to one of the conferences and uh, I was blown away by how well you guys managed that and all the content that was packed into that. I, if, folks out there, if folks out there aren't familiar with this organization, and if they are indie authors or interested in becoming authors, it's a great group. I, I highly recommend it. Um, and you guys really do keep focused and on track. And those conferences are amazing. They really are. I, I had the best time and I did such, so much great networking. And the program really keeps moving. All the events that you guys have and it's all uh, geared toward helping authors to be more successful as authors and publishers in this day and age. And I think it's great. So uh, thank you. It's a great organization. Yeah, and that's, uh, we're on track for November. I mean, it's a greatly trained conference and what we originally envisioned and originally uh, signed up for, but it's still gonna go. We're still gonna have some great guest speakers, gonna have some great presentations and networking opportunity if, you're comfortable with going and being in a, a smaller big group. But uh, also uh, the uh, Independent Alliance of Science Fiction and Fantasy Authors, of which I think you're a member, IASFA. That's uh, another group that I run. I started that. I wanted to have a focus on for science fiction and fantasy authors on the business of writing. And we do have some, uh, some great members, and I haven't been as active in there as I need to be. But uh, we'll keep that rolling, and that will only grow. It's not, uh, it may not be busy right now, but as we add content and as we engage and as uh, we have events, which we will have very specifically focused science fiction fantasy events to help the authors with their business, uh, uh, realize the 
value of their words. I think too many, uh, too many conferences uh, focus on craft, get wrapped around the axle with competition, with awards, with things that distract from the primary purpose for most authors, and that's to make, make a few nickels. Yeah, it's great to get recognition. It's great to do that. But if you have your day job on Monday, is it, is it really, and that's what you want to do. If you want to write full time, you should be able to get supported and find the resources you need to, to realize that goal. Well, something I've noticed about the uh, indie publishing movement and um, something I've seen in uh, 20 books to 50 K is uh, there's really been a lot of science fiction published and a lot of space opera. It seems like, to me, there's kind of a golden age, a real rebirth of excitement about that kind of fiction. A lot of people are making a living writing that kind of stuff, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Science fiction is science fiction is good. Thrillers are are big. Romance, uh, indie romance authors <coughs> are doing well. Not COVID. <coughs> um, <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> you gotta you gotta put caveats on this stuff watching this video will not make you sick because i'm not sick and <laughs> it's a video um the uh, so so uh the I, I would say there's never been a better time to be an indie author because first the resources you can come in knowing nothing except how to put pen to paper and realize some success fairly quickly uh people have spent decades trying to break uh, break through that glass ceiling and now there is no ceiling. There's only what you can accomplish and how much you can focus on managing your business with that great product that you write. Uh, science and what makes it easy for me in the conferences, and you, you went to a conference, you know that yeah. we kind of lean towards science fiction because well, RWA has a big conference. So our romance, there's, but the, the, we're getting a lot more romance authors now. <clears throat> but indies for science fiction, this was a great, avenue and venue for us and we had just a huge huge amount i think we had when when amazon had author ranks i think last year's conference we had 50 or 60 people from the top 100 authors were at, at the show wow that's that's really amazing <laughs> that's that's saying a lot too um a lot of the top authors in the organization are doing really well financially Without talking yeah, they're all full, almost all of them were full-time authors. Yep. Yeah, that's that's pretty inspiring. It really is. It, it gives us hope. Those of us who are not yet on the full-time track, it's good to see that it is possible, <laughs> and it's well, great to see. Full-time time isn't for full-time isn't for everybody. Some people, because <clears throat> as soon as I played golf, I played really well, and my dad wanted me to go pro. Oh. So as a teenager, I'm scratch. I'm shooting par rounds, and. Uh, it stopped being fun. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't play. There was too, I put too much pressure on myself. I got so angry when I played, I had to quit. I actually quit completely for a whole year when I was a teenager in my prime years. Wow. But when I came back after a year off, my first round, we're playing and the golf coach is like, Hey, Craig, how are you doing? Cause we, the snow and stuff that we hadn't had, had any practice rounds. Uh, and he met us on the uh, seventh green because it was up by the clubhouse and eight, nine, and be back up and then make the turn. And after the seventh green, I made my putt. And he says, hey, Craig, he was nervous. How are you doing? I said, I'm two under par. And I felt good about it because I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't have any pressure on myself. Going full-time writer, if this is your sole source of income and you're looking at it like, oh, my God, now I have to get the words. I have to tell a great story. I have to, have to, have to. A, a lot of people, that's too much pressure. Mm -hmm. And it takes it from being fun to being a job. So it's not for everybody. You just have to know your limitations and you have to realize most people uh, are making like three times their day job income when finally they move over or something like that. And they're like, okay, I can do this. Even if I only publish once every four months, once uh, twice a year, it's okay. But that pressure, you just have to understand and, and be able to deal with it. But then there's a lot of people who, hey, I write one book a year, but shouldn't you be able to make some money off that and maybe uh, make a car payment? Wouldn't that yeah. be pretty cool if you if you just your hobby made a car payment or two and and uh, allowed you to go out to dinner once in a while? I mean, even that simple of a thing is is a really nice thing. And and there's so many great storytellers out there, and we hate to see them uh, uh, constrained. 
just because, hey, you have to submit a submission letter, you have to wait a year, two years, you have to comply with guidelines. Yeah. Write a great story, publish it, make a few nickels, join a group like 20 Books to 50K and see how you how you can do that without uh, 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 spending more than you're taking in. You know, I, I really, uh, I, I appreciate your perspective on this. And, and that really, uh, you, you're saying a lot of great things that I, I think our listeners, especially our viewers, especially if they're writers or uh, publishers, uh, would, would do well to, to keep in mind, because that is very true. You can make some income, you don't have to necessarily make a full time income, and you can still really enjoy your career and, and have a lot of fun with it. And that's, I think that's very uh, clear in the project that we're working on now, uh, or that we're about to work on. Uh, we're coming up on the, hopefully, the 55% uh, funding level right now. I think we're at 53. So um, we're hoping to get this funded so that we can all join together. We have a great group of authors. And you're one, one of, the, one of uh, many uh, very uh, well-known and, and, uh, and, and successful authors in this set. We also have Dean Wesley Smith. We have uh, Ian Douglas, William H. Keith, who's really well-known for his Battletech fiction and his military science fiction and space opera. And uh, some great comic book <coughs> guys, including Peter David and Mike Barron. And it, we really have a, oh, Cat Rambo. Some viewers may mm -hmm. know of Cat Rambo. Uh, and she's got a couple hundred short stories. I mean, she is a she's a great storyteller. Oh, she really is. I'm just so fortunate to to have you guys all in this group, and we're really pushing hard. And I think uh, things are looking positive. We have a lot of momentum, and I hope that our viewers will uh, consider backing the the effort. We have the the um, uh, URL uh, displayed on the screen during this interview, and I hope you'll go out and check that out, and uh, hopefully back it back this uh, campaign. We have some really great rewards, some fun rewards, including a, um, a digital crate of uh, rare content uh, that we're putting together from all the authors in the set. And uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun. I think things that people haven't necessarily seen before and they'll have access to this by uh, backing this, the set. So um, thanks again for being a part of this, Craig. Uh, it's really, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Oh, my, my pleasure, my pleasure. and. Uh... I, I have to talk about my story. It's the the floating heads of Antioch bow ah! before them. So <laughs> this is, I mean, that's that is so seventies. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, that's a that's how I'm gonna go. I, I mean, I've got the title, I've got the punchline. Uh, I, I don't have the story, but I'll jam it out fast. I, I mean, I'll uh, uh, I'll write your five thousand, six thousand words in a, in a couple days, no more, and well, and and then get it through my process. I have four beta readers. I have a uh, uh, a copy editor, and then I have proofreaders on the other end. So it, it will be a nice, it'll be a nice story. And I, I hope you enjoy it because I know we're going to get funded. Uh, this is not, uh, not in question. We'll get it. Uh, I haven't thought about what kind of bone content, but I'll, I'll throw something out there. I have, I actually have a module that I wrote for the Dragon Magazine for a, a Gamma World self-directed module. And I have that complete and it's digital. And I'm like, ah, maybe I can, uh, maybe we can throw that together. I've got it as a PDF. We can, uh, might be able to include that. Oh, I like the sound of that, Craig. I like a that a lot. gaming <laughs> module for Gamma. There's nothing more 70s. Even though Gamma World came out in 81, there's nothing more 70s and 80s than D&D, &D, man. <laughs> well, that's for sure. That's for sure. You know, that's, that's one of the things, and it might sound a little bit like a cliche, but... Um, I am looking forward to just reading the stories in this book, even if I weren't uh, participating in it or uh, uh, trying to, to, to make this a reality, I would still be excited just to read the stories because this group of authors is, is all, all of them are so unique. Everybody has a unique style. Everybody has a strong voice and a really hyper creative mind. And I just, I can't wait to read these. I can't wait to read your story and, and Dean's story and Peter's story and all of them. And it's, it's going to be a great cool. book. So um, good, I'm really good. glad you could be a part of it. And uh, thanks again. Can't for miss, man. Thank, thanks again for being a part of the podcast and being part of the team. And for all the great work you're doing with 20 Books of 50K and the uh, IASFA and everything else you do. And, uh, and I, I hope to uh, have a lot of time uh, to work with you on the book once we get uh, through this and we'll see what's coming up in the future. So thanks again, Craig, for your time and uh, 
we'll talk to you soon. Hey, thank you, Robert, for honchoing the event, putting together. Kickstarter is no easy thing for anybody who's done it. It's There's a lot of moving parts, even if it seems simple. Hey, this is just a book. It, it's Kickstarter is not easy. And then the uh, backer kit at the end and all that stuff, there's a lot of moving parts. So it's a lot of effort that Robert's going to here for uh, to put together a book for you. And so hopefully everybody uh, uh, dives in it, and uh, sees what there is to see. There's uh, going to be a lot of great stuff out there. Thanks, Craig. Have a great day, and we'll uh, talk to you again soon.